now coming to necrosis now what happens after the irreversible cell injury uh, after a irreversible cell injury cell is going to die because the injury is irreversible either it can undergo as necrosis or apoptosis apoptosis we know it is a programmed cell death now the difference between both of them is after the injury in case of necrosis there is cellular swelling so cell swells up but after injury in case of apoptosis cell shrinks in size and that is how we start differentiating between both of them necrosis there is swelling while on the other hand ap apoptosis there is shrinkage of the cells so in case of necrosis there is going to be membrane breakdown while on the other hand in case of apoptosis remember till the cell die cell membrane is intact cell membrane will remain as it is inside dna will get fragment dna will break down and organelle will still be functional only there is going to be breakdown of dna and proteins and since protein and dna are the main source for the cell to be alive and dna and protein itself are broken down so cell is going to die eventually so this is a programmed cell death in which all the organelle are functional but cell membrane is also intact and since this the uh the content which is inside the cell is not leaking outside the cell that is why there is no inflammation in case of apoptosis these are the hallmark features these are the important characteristic features of apoptosis that the cell membrane is intact there is no inflammation since nothing is leaking out of the cells and uh, there is going to be uh, no inflammation and again the plasma membrane is intact while on the other hand when you see necrosis necrosis is when the cell is killed it is necrosed uh, you know it is uh, going to die so the cell membrane is broken down then all the content of the cell membrane leaks out and that is why there is inflammatory reaction seen in case of necrosis so you can see there is disintegration of the cell and there is a release of the content that is because of the membrane breakdown or dip, disruption of the membrane organelles are not functional and there is inflammation present while on the other hand in case of apoptosis after the injury first cell shrink in size then the dna get fragmented membrane forms blebs or there is formation of apoptotic bodies with the condensed dna organelles are still functional membrane is still intact plasma membrane is intact and there is no inflammation that is seen in case of apoptosis now coming to necrosis then we'll talk about apoptosis necrosis there is uh, uh, disruption of the plasma membrane all the content leak out and there is inflammation right now we have four different five different type of necrosis coagulative necrosis which is the most common type of necrosis which is a dry necrosis wet necrosis is the liquefactive liquid as the name suggests liquid that means there is pus involved or the tissue that is involved is liquidy so brain cns and brain are the part which shows the liquefactive necrosis caseous necrosis fat necrosis and fibrinoid necrosis these are the five different type of necrosis which we will study so coagulative necrosis which is a dry necrosis it is the most common type of necrosis and we see tombstone appearance uh, this is in fact and nucleus is destructed outline though is still preserved and we see karyohexes in case of the coagulative necrosis now the examples for coagulative necrosis is ischemia all the organ except brain and cns because it shows liquefactive necrosis dry gangrene or zen or zenker's degeneration this is the muscle necrosis which is seen in case of typhoid or thermal injury is an example for coagulative necrosis now coming to liquefactive necrosis which is also known as colliquative necrosis so hydrolytic enzyme destruction and infection causes pus or abscess in the tissues and basically uh, there is a liquid mass so this is seen in case of ischemia or infarct to the brain or in case of pyogenic infection such as pus or wet gangrene so dry gangrene is an example for coagulative necrosis while on the other hand wet gangrene is a type of liquefactive necrosis the most common type of necrosis is, is the coagulative necrosis so examples will talk again ischemia in all the organs except brain ischemia in the brain is example for liquefactive or colliquative while on the other hand ischemia to all the organ except brain is the coagulative necrosis dry gangrene coagulative necrosis wet gangrene liquefactive necrosis zenker's degeneration is a 
coagulative necrosis. Now coming to caseous necrosis, C for caseous and C for cheese like appearance. So there are white areas of necrosis seen in case of caseous necrosis. It is seen in case of tuberculosis. So tuberculosis, then it is seen in case of syphilis. Tuberculosis, we see Langerhans giant cells in case of syphilis and systemic fungal infection. We see caseous necrosis such as histoplasmosis. We see caseous necrosis or coquidio idiomycosis, also known as valley fever. We see the caseous necrosis. Now, coming to fat necrosis, so lipase act on the fatty tissues and it is going to uh, break down the fat and chalk like deposits or saponification in, is seen in case of fat necrosis. It is seen in the tissues which contain fat, such as breast or pancreas. So, breast or pancreas, peripancreatic fat or omentum. Last one is the fibrinoid necrosis. So, it is seen in the immune complex on the vessel wall. So, fibrins are formed in the vessels. Such as in case of uh, Escoff bodies in rheumatic heart disease or in case of periarthritis nodosa. So, uh, these are the examples for type 3 hypersensitivity which is a antibody immune complex basically antigen antibody complex. Fibrinogen leakage out of the vessels and the examples you can remember from VAMP which is Wagner's granulomatosis, Escoff bodies, malignant hypertension and periarthritis nodosa. So all the disease in which fibrinoid is formed are examples for fibrinoid necrosis. Coagulative necrosis is because of denaturation of the proteins. We already talked about the reason for coagulative necrosis it is denaturation of the protein it is an example for dry necrosis the nucleus is disrupted karyohexes is seen in karyohexes is seen in case of coagulative necrosis tombstone appearance in fact coagulative necrosis is the most common type of necrosis so coagulative necrosis is seen in case of dry gangrene while on the other hand in case of wet gangrene we see liquefactive necrosis necrosis means there is enzymatic degradation degradation fat necrosis is common in breast tissue along with that uh, fat necrosis is seen in case of omentum and pancreas in cell death myelin figures are derived from they are derived from cell membranes if the cell membranes are coiled and they form the myelin figures liquefactive liquefactive action in necrotic tissue result in the gangrene and it is known as wet gangrene 